Hello people, I've been building this uh, Team Losey Racing TLR uh, 2250 Elite. It's a two wheel drive, one ton scale buggy. Uh, I've just finished the uh, kit build. So, as you can see, I've done uh, yeah, almost all the kit build. So now it's time to install the electronics. It's very light as it is now. Hmm. That's, that's of course, course good. Here you can see the box. It's the 22DC50 Elite. Uh, it, Elite, so it comes with some upgrades. Uh, two wheel drive as I said. Uh, I'm usually not uh, doing unboxing videos. And I don't like either to show off all different types of car because I buy my cars myself and I drive them. I like to drive cars. I'm not that very much into building cars. Uh, but alright, it was a nice build. Most of the things went okay. This car uh, is uh, comes with a dirt setup. So the car is uh, by kit and default setup to running on dirt ground. Uh, so it's got some higher uh, ground, ground clearance or ride height. I don't want to go into details about what this kit includes, but it has some aluminium option parts included and also some carbofiber parts. Uh, why did I buy yet another 110 scale racing car? Well. We started to race a bit on uh, carpet tracks here where I live and uh, the one tenth scale is uh, the best uh, type of cars to use there on these tracks we have here. And uh, first I decided to buy the Team Associate uh, B74.1 uh, but the order was a bit slow and then we got the message that we would get a surprise and we get, got the 74.2, the new edition of that car. And that's a four wheel drive car, but I also wanted a two wheel drive car because in competition you, you have both four wheel drive and two wheel car, no, two, two wheel drive cars. So it, it would be nice to have a one of each car so I could uh, uh, run in both the, the competitions. So I have more run time really. Also when you uh, drive to a, a racing track, for me it's about 40-50 minutes to drive with my car. Uh, it's very annoying if you, in the first minute, break something and can't uh, repair the car because you maybe don't have the spare parts or if it's maybe a more complicated uh, break. So then it's good to have also two cars. Uh, yes, so I have almost like a spare car with you. But I wanted one two-wheel drive and one four-wheel drive car. So. I ordered first the Team Associate B74.1, but I got the B74.2. Then I also ordered this uh, Lowsy Racing TLR uh, two wheel drive. So that was the original plan. But then uh, here in Norway, I found a very cheap used uh, two wheel drive car, Team Associate B6.2. Let's see, we have it. Here is the Team Associate B74.2 that I've, I've run it once on the track now. Uh, I did discover a few uh, small things, but I come back to that later, I think. I have to check that what I fixed is maybe okay now. And uh, this is the car I bought used, also a two wheel drive car. So this is Team Associated. So you can see these cars are, of course, very similar, really. And uh, I, I didn't buy, no, I didn't build this car because I bought it uh, assembled with electronics and all. About uh, 330 US dollars. So that's a good price for this type of car with electronics. Uh, this I bought new, so I now built it. And uh, it's very similar in the constructions, really. That was something I did discover when I now built up this uh, Team uh, Losey racing car. Uh, much of the design is quite similar. So if you built one of these car, I guess it would be not uh, a big surprise when you build uh, another car, even in another brand. 
So, yeah. But what I want to talk in this video is really the plan now. And also I can say a bit about the build here. Because this car is set up as a dirt car. That would say that it's uh, have higher ground clearance as I said. And if you look in the back of the user, user manual here. Uh, you will see, uh, let's see here, on this page here, you have the kit setup. And this is set up with ride height 22mm. And uh, I probably want to lower that a bit on my car because we are riding on uh, uh, carpet. But uh, one of the track is very uneven, so I cannot have the lowest carpet set up. I have to have a bit higher. So I noted a few difference I've done in the carpet setup. The most important is of course that you will lower the ride height. Uh, but then you also have to, to uh, get the, uh, what is called the diffs some higher. And you also want to get the so it's, uh, axle height. You also want to rise the axle height. And of course you want to use uh, other wheels and I also changed to other springs, shock springs, some st stiffer shock springs, some thicker oil both in the front and in the rear. Uh, yeah and also added sway bars both in the front and the rear. But we can take a look in the user manual, you can see if we can, I've noted some points uh, that you'll see here. The build went very good. Yeah, of course also the dirt edition comes with a ball diff. So I have bought the slipper diff. So I, I've installed the slipper as you can see here. Uh, so you can just buy the slipper diff. You, it comes in the, a bag for itself and use that. Because on carpet you usually want to buy a slipper. Uh, because they say if you have a gear diff, uh, it has, has to distribute the forces always 100%, either to both wheels or to only one wheel or something like that. Uh, but when you drive on a very high uh, traction ground like carpet, you, that could uh, destruct something because, because something, if you're on throttle and the car lands or something happens, uh, the power can just be enough so you can break some gears. Uh, yeah, maybe in the rear diff or something like that. Uh, so they say you should buy a slipper diff and use that on carpet. Because a slipper, if the forces are just too big, these pads here, these slipper pads here, just slip if you set it not too tight. And that could uh, rescue your drivetrain so it, you not break something. And you can adjust this slipper, of course, uh, as you would like it to be. So with a slipper diff, if, if it's very high forces here, <coughs> uh, the forces will just go to the slipper pads because the slipper pads will slip and that, that will create heat. So the forces will uh, be gone transmitted to the heat here in the slipper instead. Uh, if you had a gear diff, uh, the power would just have to distribute somehow to the drivetrain and that could break something if the forces were too high. That on on uh, high traction ground like carpet. If you're on dirt that's not usually a problem because on dirt there are usually some uh, the wheels will usually slip some on the ground. So if you on throttle and land uh, you should maybe not do that either way but uh, maybe the, the dirt is enough so the uh, wheels tires would just slip a bit on the ground so you don't break something to the drive track. Okay that said so I didn't install a ball diff I bought the slipper diff and had installed that that one of the changes. I know just going through the manual I'm gonna note a few difference in my setup because this car is now uh, has a carpet setup while the kit is really a dirt setup. So let's see here. The links are the same. 
all the servo link and front camber and rear camber and the steering link here. Uh, the shocks are the same. I didn't uh, change the length of the shock house or what they call it, this rod, shock rods or something like that. The only thing I changed with the shocks is that I did buy some uh, thicker, stiffer springs. Just uh, look up on the internet and you will find some uh, setup for carpet racing and you can see what springs they are using. And I also did use some thicker oil both in the front and rear. Let me see here. And then we go on with the building here. And one other thing I did change was this uh, part here. Uh, what it's called, it got, uh, the pivot block or something. I'm not, I don't remember the name of this block. You have it under the front. I did buy the brass. You can get it. This is in plastic in, in the kit, but you can buy it in uh, aluminium or brass. I think brass is the heaviest one. And I did see on the internet that a lot of the carpet uh, racers were using that part in the brass. So you can maybe see it there. You can see the color here. It's like gold color. So that, that piece here is in brass. And that makes the car a bit heavier in the front. And uh, that should give the car a bit better stick to the ground in the front. Because you don't have very much weight in the front really. As you have the engine and... Uh, battery here but uh, so the brass piece should give it a bit more weight and that could maybe get a bit better steering on carpet ground then you have the uh, steering here assembly uh, I can't see anything I've made different here and I build the rest of the steering parts here Yeah. And I kept this uh, setup here, it's the trail setup and the uh, uh, steering setup here. And I used the kit setup for these parts because I also did look up how the Lowsid uh, have it in the carpet edition of this car and they're using the same setup here. So I kept that. But here you have the front hubs and they have some spacers. And for the carpet edition, uh, you are using four millimeter spacers uh, on the upside. Uh, that would uh, higher the axles a bit. Because when you have a, a very a low ground clearance, you want the, you want the axles to be a bit higher up. Uh, I hope I'm saying the right, but I'm sure I did uh, uh, just use spacers here, 4 millimeters on the upside on the kit. They are using 2 millimeters on the upside and 2 millimeters at the bottom. Again, this, that, this is also to get a better setup for the carpet. And then it goes on here. And I think I just stayed to the kit setup shop positions here. I didn't see a big difference in the carpet edition. And then we have uh, the rest of the front part. But here before I did mount the shocks, I did uh, uh, assemble the front sway bar. And it's uh, TL TLR. 334055 uh, that's the front sway bar so we have to use another type of front plastic part here because that's where the sway bar are sticking into on the, under the wing here so we have to remove that I didn't uh, notice that before I, I came this far and this is just how you assemble the front sway bar and I used the 1.2 millimeter sway bar in the front i'm not sure i just saw some other racers did use that on carpet so i'm just gonna try that uh, i'm not a very experienced uh, carpet racer so i don't feel a very big difference when i'm do small adjustments so if i would 
use a 1.4 millimeters Faber how I'm sure I'm not wouldn't notice any difference at all you have to have some experience and uh, have driven the car for some time because before you can start to feel these small adjustments I guess but I just want to go with that so that was another thing I did change adding a front sway bar then we assemble the shocks here uh, yes and mm, yeah here in the user manual they are using the outer hole uh, lower shock mount but uh, for the carpet I did use the middle hole that probably also something I've discovered and seen in the carpet setup cars so you, for the front shocks you are uh, you are um, mounting the shocks a bit more straight up and down and that would also give the car a bit stiffer uh, shocks or setup in the front so now we go on with the build and here I build the uh, mount for the for the gearbox diff height and here, here we have, have the adjustments for the diff height and that's also a uh, something different with the carpet setup. The dirt setup use zero, so they have the uh, diff height on the low position. But for the carpet, you use plus 1.75 millimeter. So that's the middle position for the diff height. So you're raising the diff height a bit for carpet uh, setup, and that's because you are using a very low uh, ride height. And then you want the uh, axles to be a bit more straight. So you lift up the diff. And then I guess the rest of the things are all, all right. Of, yeah, of course. I'm not uh, using a, I'm not using a ball diff. Uh, maybe I said wrong in the starter. Yes. They are using a ball diff here for the dirt, but I'm using a gear diff. Uh, do I remember wrong now? Are both the cars using a slipper clutch then? Maybe. Uh, so, uh, because I see here they are inserting the ball diff, but I, of course, had a uh, gear diff here. Yes. They are using the slipper here also. Uh, so I did say something wrong in the start. I, I did say that I, uh, instead of the ball diff, was using a slipper, but that's wrong. Instead of the ball diff, I using a gear diff. And both the cars, even dirt and carpet, are using a slipper. So I'm using a... a and I saw the slipper is the, is the same here. It just me that uh, changed from ball diff to gear diff. Yep. And then we have the pills insert for the uh, rear C and D, D blocks. And here, I'm not completely sure, but uh, here in the use manual kit setup for dirt, I'm using the center pills for both the C and D block. Uh, I've seen some carpet setups that's, that they uh, usually uh yeah i'm not really sure i know uh, but they usually uh, in the d block goes a bit more on the inside uh, because if this this are the uh, hang pins the rear hang pins they are bit default up pointing a bit in inside so you have this toe in with the rear uh, wheels but then on dirt, I read that they, they maybe take the front in the mount in a, yes, pills insert. So you get a bit more out in the front, but they also take a bit more inside in the rear. So they are not that very much toe in. They are a bit more straight up the rear, rear wheels. I could be wrong here, but uh, that's what I used. And I also did uh, did. Uh, high uh, one degree or what it's called uh, a bit up so that because i want the roll center to be a bit higher 
uh, that should keep the car uh, not rolling so much on high traction ground. But that's just something I read, read and I may be a bit uh, wrong here. But that's also a, a change for the carpet setup. And then, yes, I also, this is the rear part that I just assembled it there. And then you have here the uh, rear hubs. And also here, the dirt uh, setup is that you are have the hubs uh, on low. But for carpet, you raise it up to yeah, plus four millimeter. So use this insert blocks here to raise up the hubs, and that would raise the axles. Uh, yeah, and I also added a sway bar in the rear, one point zero millimeter. And then you're mounting the shocks in the rear. And then you have the car, the kit, really finished. And that's what we are looking at here. Uh, so I'm not sure if you can see it, but I've got this sway bar here in the front, under the wing here. I got some stiffer springs, some thicker oil. Uh, I also just use spacers on the upside here in the hubs. Uh, yeah, and for the rear part there, the slip bar is in both the dirt and carpet edition. But I got a gear diff in here, not the ball diff. And again with the shocks, some stiffer springs, some thicker oil. And the... Uh, let's see... Yeah, there are some uh, inserts here in the hubs, so the hubs are raised up a bit for carpet and that would uh, raise the axles. And I got the sway bar, as you can maybe see here, this is the sway bar mount there in the rear. And the pills are a bit different, so I, I not have that very much toe in in the rear, it's a bit more straight the wheels in the rear and I also use pills so that I lift it up the hang pins a bit so the roll center get a bit higher I'm not sure if this working okay I just have to try uh, but now I should start to install the electronics and we can see what parts you need now we have the kit uh, more or less finisher and what parts do you need well first I bought this Tim Losi aluminium servo horn and the kit comes with some uh, servo horns but I've not checked it yet I believe they are in plastic but I could of course be wrong uh, here they are yeah, it looks like the kit servo horns are in plastic. So I bought uh, this uh, 25 tooth uh, aluminium horn. It's TLR3310 T3. So that I'm gonna use. And I also bought a 24 tooth pinion gear. Uh, TLR3320 T4. It says it's an aluminium. I've heard that some guys are using the steel pinions and uh, Schumacher are making some uh, steel pinions. So I'm going but I'm going to first start with testing this. And if it's uh, break down, some people say that you can get small rocks inside and that can break off the tooth or something, especially if you've got yeah, these aluminium pinions are some weaker than a steel pinion. So if you have this problem, just try to upgrade to a steel pinion. I bought the 24 because I have some experience now with the engine and the EC and 
I believe this should be okay. I also got the 26 tooth pinion, but I'm gonna start with this 24. Uh, so this is the ESCN and uh, motor. It's the budget, uh, what I call electronics. This hobby wing 10 PL 120 amp ESC. It's for brushless and for sensor uh, motors. And this uh, EC is about $50 and this motor is about $55 I believe. And I bought the same as I'm using in my uh, team associate at uh, B74.2. Uh, so this is a 10.5 turn motor. Uh, this EC as I've said before don't have what they call blinking mode. That's uh, a mode you uh, set on the EC, then it will start to flash some colors and that is just a signal that saying that you have no zero timing adjustment on the EC and in some competition that's required so if you're driving in competitions where they required blinking mode on the EC you cannot use this EC then you have to find another EC but that is usually not an issue for me I believe uh, also, I experienced with the team associated car that uh, I really had to set up the timing a bit. I set it to, was it 11.5? That would get me up to about uh, 60 km per hour with this uh, motor. So that is the motor and ESC. And then you have to have some receiver. I'm just using a Spectrum ASA 315. Uh, you don't have, it have three channels plus an additional battery here, uh, plug-in, but uh, I, you not really need maybe three channels. But for the team associate, the B74 car, I thought I had to have this because I wanted to also have the motor fan plugged in here. I experienced that the motor fan was really not uh, required. The motor was uh, just lunky warm or you could hold on it uh, no problem at all. So I removed the fan on the team associated B74.4, no, B74.2. So I'm gonna try that also. I'm not gonna install a motor fan on this with this setup because I, I think it's maybe not gonna get that hot. Then of course I will when I drive the car the first time, so I have to check the temperature on the motor. Just feel on it. If you can hold your hands on the motor and it's down to 40, 50 degrees Celsius, that's uh, all right. If it's getting so hot that it's uh, you can't hold the fingers on the motor, you maybe have to add a fan to it. And then we have this uh, angel plugs. They call it gear yeah, racing. That's just that you solder onto the wires from the EC that goes into the battery and they have both four and five millimeters as I said in my other video so with the batteries I'm using the, that's four millimeter holes but it's easy to switch from four to five millimeters with this uh, you just screw screw in other plugs there in this angel adapter it's called WPT0121 angel type four millimeter and five millimeter connector plug and as we are driving on uh, racing tracks, we use this MyLaps RC4 transponder to get the uh, laps times. So that's going to be in the car. And this also requires power, so this are plugging also into the receiver. And then we have the servo. <laughs> and this is maybe not the right servo I bought. It's a power hoarder. Uh, it's a servo that can take up to 8.4 volt and 7.4 volt, of course. But uh, this uh, EC, EC here have a back that's only deliver 6 volt. That's also something you have to think about when you buy this EC. You have to see what servo you are using. Because you have to get the torque, the force and the speed on 6 volt as you need. So I'm not sure if this power or the servo here will be fast enough and strong enough on 6 volt. But I'm just going to try it. And it's also, a, as you can see, it's a short, uh, shorter edition of the servo, some smaller. 
Uh, I just hope it will, will be strong and fast enough for me. I don't require that much as my driving skills are not that very high. So I'm gonna start off with this servo and see how it goes. And you see, you get the servo with some uh, servo horns, but they are in plastic. And you should really have uh, steel or aluminium servo horns. Because you don't have a servo saver with this 110 scale cars. You just uh, mount the servo horn and it goes directly into the servo link here on the car. As you can see here. So uh, you don't have a servo saver. So you should buy some quality servos with steel or titanium gears. And what I dis uh, discovered on my other two wheel car, drive car, was that after about 10 battery packs, I did have one breakage. And that was that this uh, servo ball, what is called ball cup or what is called, did break here uh, after some uh, driving. And I just uh, did a bad maneuver and drove into a wall on the carpet track. So I, you get very strong forces when you hit into something in high speed and something have to break. And that was this small and there. And that's okay that these small parts are breaking because they are cheap to, to uh, buy. And uh, also usually quite fast to change. So I could really uh, have to taken with me that spare part to the track and just change it there. But I didn't have it with me so I had to fix it when I get home got home but so now now servo saver so you should maybe get some okay good quality servos just uh, ask the other drivers where you are driving uh, on the racing track what that they are using but some people are using very expensive servos so you should maybe try to find what's in your what's in your uh, yeah, cost price. So that's uh, all for this video. I'm gonna start to assemble the electronics now. Come back later when I'm finished with that, and later also when I start to test this car. Thanks.